Hi, welcome back to Team Woolly Sheep Reviews. So we're gonna look at the X20S or X20 and we're gonna look at flashing receivers. Now you've got your laptop, you've got your radio, you've got a receiver and you've got a USB-C lead, a data lead. Or like me, I've got an RX6R. These are really good receivers if if you got your flying fixed wind or even your quadcopters, they're only small. So, you know, they best of both worlds if you want it. Some of the stuff is ultra micro, is really small. But this these are great. As you can see, they come with a set of leads. So you need to, to make sure you get the right set of leads. Find out what your pin outs and you will find that on the back end there's there's a there's a lead with an, a normal sort of servo connector. Negative, positive, and smart port, and they've conveniently put the plug on ready. You need the firmware. So the best place to get the firmware is be careful, go straight to the manufacturer's webpage. So freesky-rc.com or frsky-rc.com and it should look something like this and you'll see that they got all the products. So I've gone to the Tandem X20S page because that's what I've got um, and when you scroll down you'll find there's lots of information about your transmitter but there's a download section. So if you click on the download section so the current OS firmware that's available. It's also got the tandem module firmware. So what I would suggest is you download these in readiness because you might be updating the radio. So the two different firmwares is the module, is the transmitter module that's built into the radio it is not part of the radio firmware. So when you update the module, the transmitter module, that's inside the transmitter, you tell it to, to update an internal device. So they exist as two different entities. The radio is like a computer, and then the, the transmitter module is a peripheral attached to the computer internally. So it's interesting, you, you need to know that. Just updating the radio firmware doesn't touch the transmitter module. And in that transmitter module is where all the the LBT access, all that sort of protocol will be held. So what you need to do is create a folder. So I've got two folders and I've just downloaded the radio firmware. So I'm going to paste that into there. So now receivers. So if I go to the product information, the receiver is an RX6R and it's quite a popular one so rx6r is one of the first to come up and when i go down i'll have a choice of access or accst d16 firmware but i'm going to actually go with the access i've got an access radio and this access is what i'm going for on the top end that there's connections and we are going to plug in the data lead and it's a USB-C. Now, to, to enter into like the bootloader mode, you press and hold that button while you power up. And as you can see, it straight away goes into bootloader. So I'm then going to plug the USB into the computer. And you will see on my radio, it say USB plugged. So what you'll see is two USB devices, one called No Name, and there's nothing much in there except the bitmaps folder and one called untitled so this is the the sd card basically and in that sd card i've created a folder called firmware so for this exercise i'm going to copy my radio firmware and tx firmware folders and i'm going to paste them so i've got two folders in there now i'm going to show you how to update the radio probably be on a separate video so rx firmware receiver firmware so that is now on the radio right so with the radio unplugged i can now turn off the radio you start the radio normally 
Right, so under the radio menu, under the the tools or the set settings menu, you will see file manager. You'll see all the folders that existed on the computer and you'll now see there's a folder called RX firmware. And if I click that, you'll see the file is there. If I plug in the receiver, so I'm just going going through. Now, what, the one thing to bear in mind, you'll see that there's a little key. I think they're a Futaba format where they got a little tail on the plug. But wherever the tail is, is going to be the signal wire. So the yellow wire in this case will go to where the little key is. So the yellow wire goes to where that, that microphone jack is. So I'll plug the radio, the receiver into there. I select the file I want to update. And I press that button there, the enter button, or I can tap the screen. And then I got a couple of options. Flash external device, flash RX by over the air, copy, move or delete. So I want to flash external device. So I'm gonna select that and click it. And as you will see, this is now flashing. And it'll take a moment to go through the process and you'll see on the receiver that the lights are flashing and they're communicating. You know, it is literally dangling off the back of the radio. And that is now flashed. Lights have gone off on the receiver, so there's nothing flashing. And it's just simply close it. So that now is flashed to the latest firmware. And this was formerly an ACCST receiver, it's now Access. One thing you'll find with Access is that you have to register them. When I say register, what I mean is like a pairing process where you're going to match this receiver to this radio's software. So it'll work with this radio. When you come to bind it, you just select bind and power up the model and it'll say, you know, this, this RX6R receiver has just come into being powered up. Do you want to select it? You select it and jobs are good done. So I've cloned the what for and i've called it test so very basic settings in there and it's all exactly the same as my what for so i'm now going to go into the rf systems and in the rf systems it's going to be the internal systems so you can use the internal radio i'm not using a module on the back this that's the external systems is going to be where crossfire and everything live and i'm going to switch it on the type is access 2.4 so i'm going down i'm using the internal antenna that there i can select the external antenna which are these sockets on the back so the 900 mega is off the model id is number 36 now i'm going to go into register mode so if i click on register register so plug the receiver in while holding the button like you would on a Register. on a normal bind and powered it up. And you'll see the radio now is recognized an RX6R and I'm selecting register. Registration okay. So you now you're you're ready to set the model up. You've plugged it into the plane and you've got it all ready to go and you're thinking I need to bind this now. So all you do to bind it is you press bind. Bind. It's waiting for receiver. So you plug in your model this is the model you plug it in and it comes up and it's telling me that it's just seen you can see an rx 6r bind so i select the rs 6r bind okay so there's no pressing any buttons there's no messing around you can see on the radio now it's accepted the rx 6r and that is basically it if i plug some servos into this you'll see then that it's all ready to go Oh, I haven't got a silver horn on there, but as you can see there, you know, that's my cyclic, so it's actually working these servos. So just as a recap, we've downloaded the the firmware, we put them on a folder, we've identified the lead and the cables and found that this, this plug is the S port with power. We plugged it into the back of the radio. We've transferred from the laptop firmware files onto the radio and activate the flash external device so this is now flashed we've then created a model and registered this to the radio powered it up and bound this receiver to the 
model with access you haven't got to register the ACCST but with access you have to it's the process is 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 allowing the possibility of having multiple receivers on a model so instead of plugging receivers one into the other you can you can bind multiple receivers to the same model so a little bit of a feature not something that i've used or plan to use but you know it is there so if you just bound this uh, most systems will allow a single receiver to be bound to that model and then that's it so if you bind a new receiver it just wipes the other one out with this one you can you can bind multiple receivers so if you've got lots of peripherals then there's something you can do i hope that was straightforward and not so worrying once once you've done one it's just a case of making sure you've got the right firmware load it all up on your your memory card and then a simple case then of plug in the receiver select the right firmware and flash it and you're good to go you'll go through i did I, once i did one i thought oh that was pretty painless and then i went through and did them all i got all the receivers together that i had and then just flashed them all use that latest firmware the using the the firmware off that uh, FR Sky Free Sky uh, web page is the right thing to do. There's lots of other pages about promoting different firmwares and you know places to download them from, but be careful. I'm going to tell you there's worms, viruses, all sorts of things that can come down. So select the manufacturer's web page, download the trusted firmware, and you're you're good to go. So I hope that was helpful and come back for more see you soon thank you for watching team willy sheep reviews bye